I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us once again at the Azure Academy. And today we're going to be talking about combining three of our most recent solutions together, the public IP prefix, Azure Bastion, and the Azure Firewall. So click on that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. It really does help us out to keep making videos for you. And give us some comments below on things that you're interested in going forward. Now, if you'll remember from our Azure Bastion video, at the moment, Bastion is still in preview, so we need a special link to the portal to get in there and that's where I'm at right now that's why we have this orange banner across the top and if you haven't seen our video yet on Azure Bastion then you can go right up to our card and watch that video uh, as well as the public IP prefix and Azure firewall don't forget to check those out if you haven't done so already you will need them for what we're gonna talk about today so we're gonna go right over to the Azure firewall itself and then I'll show you what we've got all deployed here inside the Azure Firewall, there's a couple updates since we last talked about the firewall and probably the biggest of which is that the firewall now supports multiple front end public IP addresses. So originally this was not the case. You had a single public IP, which turned out to be a limiting factor in people using the firewall. So we added the ability to use multiple public IPs. And you can see from our IP address scheme here that we've got one public IP that's all kind of by itself in an address space. And then we have two that are right next to each other. And that is from the public IP prefix. And again, check out the card if you haven't seen that video already. So this feature gives us the ability to layer multiple multiple IP addresses so that we don't have to use NAT translation and we can just have the same port, for example, port 3389 to get to our VMs or port 80 to get to your web servers and you can have 100 public IP addresses. Now, if you find that that is not enough, give me some comments below and we'll get that information back to the product group and increase that number. One of the other big updates to the firewall in recent days is that the firewall now supports availability zones. And now, of course, this is going to be dependent on the particular region that you're deploying in, whether or not zones are available. But where they are, you can use your availability zones. And that means that your firewall is a little more highly available. Remember, the Azure Firewall is a PaaS based firewall service, so it will scale to your needs. And being able to scale across multiple zones means that and it's more highly available in case of any kind of outage. So let's look at what this would be like to deploy. So I'll go up to the top and we'll type in firewall and then we'll go to deploy a new firewall. And when we do, you see that we have our region here and that controls whether or not availability zones are accessible. So North Central US currently does not have the zones. So let's go to something like East US and then we can select which zones in particular we want to use. And same thing if you go to uh, other regions, for example, French Central has zones, but somewhere like uh, Brazil at this point does not. If the region that you want has zones available, then you can choose up to how however many zones you want to include. Just be aware that the more zones that you include, potentially the more cross traffic between zones that you would be creating and possibly incurring charges because the egress between zones uh, does at this moment have some egress cost. So let's look over here at the pricing on the firewall for zones. So inbound data transfers and outbound data transfers. These are the egress between the zones themselves, but that is a cost that you possibly need to consider as you're deploying things in your zones. So we'll cancel out of this since I've already got a firewall deployed. And let's take a look at some of our rule sets. Now, one of our first additions that's happened recently in our application rules is the ability to do FQDN tagging for HD insights. Okay, this was a feature that was not present originally and it was also highly requested. And another feature that is here under the target FQDNs is now the ability to do SQL. Originally, we can only do HTTP and HTTPS, but now we can include MS SQL and then you can specify your port, but you will also need to specify your fully qualified target. So for example, specify your SQL protocol with the port that you're using and then the fully qualified DNS name of your SQL instance. 
All right, we'll come back to our rules in a second, but let's look over here at threat intelligence. This is a recently added feature, and this is still in preview. Threat intelligence is basically where you can leverage the knowledge of the cloud and what Microsoft has gathered from all of our telemetry around the world so that we can alert and or block known malicious IP addresses and domains. So the firewall will not even accept traffic from those if you choose to enable this. And of course, you can set up your diagnostic settings and look at your log analytics to find where all of your traffic sources are coming from. And as you can see here, I've set this to alert and deny. And then you can click on this link here to learn more about threat intelligence. And of course, you can look at some of the log analytics samples for reviewing this data. And then of course, we can copy that here and then bring that back into Azure, paste and run. And there is all the threat intelligence data for the last 24 hours. And you can pull up one of these items and you can see that this particular local IP address was trying to go through and get to this destination and the action was allowed. Okay, and this was going to blob storage. Okay, so all of that threat intelligence data is then present here in log analytics, and that assumes, of course, that you have enabled log analytics diagnostics to send your data out to log analytics, or if you're not using log analytics, you can send it to an event hub or a storage account to parse that, and you can just select those options as you need to. All right, so that's enough of the firewall updates. Now let's go back to our resource group here and I've got one called Bastion Firewall and this is because we're combining our services in this video as I said so here we have our public IP prefix and this prefix has issued two different IP addresses and you already saw those as part of the firewalls front end IP and then we also have our Bastion service already created and then we have two VMs so let's take a look at our virtual network and then you can see where we've got all of our stuff connected. So our Bastion service currently has two instances stood up. Our firewall is sitting on our firewall subnet as it must. And then we have a server subnet and a jump box subnet, each with one server. And then we have a Azure user defined route table and that route table configures all traffic to go to the firewall and that is applied to our server and our jump server VNets. Here's the thing about using the Azure firewall with a service like Bastion. It's really not necessary. And let me show you why. And I'm bringing this up because I've had a few people ask me about it uh, since Bastion came out and they've already been using the firewall where they had some general questions. And the problem with doing this kind of approach is when you wake any rules in the firewall, basically this is what you do. You say that I've got a front end IP of my firewall and I've got some kind of incoming port and I want that to translate to a private IP on maybe the same port or a different port. So in this case, I've got my front end IP address or one of them. You can see I've got three different IPs here. And then I wanna send that to a non-standard port for RDP and I'm gonna translate that to RDP to get to this VM. So let's actually try this. So I'll pull up my RDP client. Okay, and since we're going to a non-standard port, you have to put in the IP colon and then the port number. And so we'll connect and I'll log in. So now we're on the box. So this is standard procedure and nothing is really unexpected about this. But another thing that we could do using these kind of firewall rules is we can also get to our public websites. And so we've got a website at our .52 on port 80, .64 on port 80, and .65 on port 8080. And these are going to two different servers. Okay, so port 80 for each of our two targets. And then I just did port 8080 to show the same kind of NAT translation. So let's look at that. Okay, so port 80 for our 64, port 80 for our 52. And you can see that those are different server names. My web server named server and a server named 2019 server. And then port 8080 is also open for 2019 server. Okay, so that's the basic kind of stuff that the firewall will do. Now, the negative of using this approach as a jump server entrance to your environment is that you still have to have the VM exposed through the firewall. This is not completely a bad solution. We've been doing this kind of thing for years, but Azure Bastion, avoids this possible point of attack. So if RDP is open on this 
support, you're going to have people potentially try to attack to get to it. Azure Bastion, on the other hand, is a service that allows remote access over SSH or RDP without exposing your systems at all. The other thing that people uh, sometimes have asked me is when setting up the route tables for the firewall, the standard practice is you attach the user-defined route to every single subnet. And that way, all traffic flows through the firewall. If you are using Azure Bastion at the same time as you are using the Azure Firewall, do not assign the user-defined route to the Azure Bastion subnet, okay? This must have no user-defined route. And the reason is, if you do, then Azure Bastion will not work. Okay, so if you plan on using the firewall, that's great. Use it for whatever you want, but I suggest that you use or at least consider Azure Bastion for your remote access, jump server, you know, RDP, SSH type functions, and don't use that through the firewall because it is actually more secure because nothing is exposed. So if we go to our server here, 2019 server has no public IP address whatsoever, and it is on .04. And if we go back to our firewall and check our rules again, then we look at our RDP port that's open, and that is on 2.4. So our 0.4 has no RDP. So let's go back, and we'll go to our 2019 server again, and we'll go to connect and we'll use Azure Bastion. And once Bastion is set up, so I just have to put in my local username and password and hit connect. At this point, I've got a secure connection to my 2019 server without having to go through the firewall. Okay, and there's my host name and my IP address just to verify the box that we're on. Now I can still use Azure Bastion for my other server, which is also behind the firewall. We've got our RDP session that's currently open, okay, and that's to our 2012 server here. So let me actually uh, arrange these windows so that you can see them a little bit better. Okay, so now we've got our RDP active session over here going through the firewall at port 33890. And then I will log on to this server through Bastion and we'll hit connect. And then you can see our RDP session has dropped because someone else has made a connection. So we don't really need the rules that we have here for RDP if we want to use Bastion. And it is what I'm recommending because it is a more secure way to get to your system. So you don't need SSH, you don't need RDP to get through uh, the firewall if you're using the Bastion service, which again is in preview. So consider that whether or not preview is something that you want to leverage in your environment. So what have we looked at today? We've looked at some of the updates to the Azure Firewall, and that includes the ability to use multiple public IP addresses, the new threat intelligence, which I highly recommend. Of course, you do have to set up your diagnostics to go to log analytics for this. And then additionally, we looked at some of our rules with our application rules, now being able to do HD Insight FQDN tags, as well as SQL through our rule set here, and then that we don't need to use our NAT translation for RDP or SSH if we want to use Azure Bastion. And we combine that, of course, with our public IP prefix so that we could get the specific IP addresses that we wanted for our environment. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at these updates to the Azure Firewall, as well as how to combine this with the Azure Bastion service and the public IP prefix. Let's not forget about that one. And that uh, you found this uh, a little helpful for as you're implementing these solutions together. So give us some comments below on what questions you have or things that you're interested in and click that subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit that thumbs up if you thought that this video was helpful and let us know what you're interested in so we can make our next videos for you. Thanks for joining us today and happy learning.